Life After Life Productions, is that where you did um, 1942? 1944. 44. Yes, 44. I, I wrote that play. Okay. I directed that play, okay. and I com- we completely produced that play under yeah. Life After Life Productions. Okay. Yes. And what, what was it? Because I remember, I remember seeing it. It was out here. Yes. Okay, I remember seeing yes. it. And I, like I said, I mean, I've always had the inclination to, I got to do it by myself, but mm-hmm. to see you do it yeah, the way you did it. Mm-hmm. I was just like, man, this girl right here is just powerful, mm. is what I said to myself. And I was like, damn, she is just really just getting it. She's really just that. really, really getting it. And so, um, yeah, man, um, talk about it. What, yeah. what was it about? Is, so it's based off a true story. A lot of people don't know who George Stinney Jr. was, mm-hmm. but he was a young boy that was falsely accused of, of killing a young girl, mm-hmm. and he was put in the electric chair mm-hmm. as a child mm-hmm. in 1944. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's so sad because we, we, we know about Emmett Till, right? We mm-hmm. know about those instances, but when you think about people like Emmett Till, my mind starts to wonder, well, how many other Emmett Tills are there? Yeah. What other stories For did sure. we not get the, the, the opportunity to know about yeah. and get the opportunity to honor those 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 people yeah. that, you know, went through what they went through. And George Stinney, unfortunately, was one of those young boys. Mm-hmm. And they put this young boy in the electric chair. Yeah. And so I was like, we need to tell his story. So it was it was a little bigger than art for me. It was like as a as a black woman. I need to tell this young boy's story. Mm-hmm. I know this story and I know other people don't. Now it's a responsibility aspect. Mm-hmm. So we put the show up. We ran it for a full weekend. I compl- I cast the entire project. Mm-hmm. I directed it, which was an, uh, an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. It was so amazing, JR. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to do it again. I want to bring the show to Houston mm. and I want to bring the show to Atlanta because it, it shouldn't stop just here. Mm-hmm. So that is one of my, my five year goals. Okay. It's coming. Okay. Yeah. So, so how do you get the, um, the, um, factual side of it to be able to portray it, make it, make it authentic? How so do you do that? what I did, I researched this project for about a year before I put pen to paper. Okay. So I researched the stories. I pulled court documents. You can actually find, he was exonerated 71 years later, far after he had died. It was, it's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. But I, the, the entire court case of that exoneration is actually, you can see it on YouTube. Okay. So I watched the entire, hours and hours and hours of footage, but I watched the entire thing because mm-hmm. they talk about everything that happened. His sisters were able to speak about their brother and who he was, and they were able to vividly remember him. And... I used all of it. I used the information. I actually had the opportunity. One of my actors got in contact with the prisoner that was in the cell with him Mm -hmm. before he was walked to the, what they called the death chamber at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, just being able to speak to people Mm -hmm. from that time. Mm -hmm. Ironically, around the same time I came up with 1944, Someone was doing a, a movie about it, and I think the movie's still out. And the producer had actually reached out to me, and was like, "How do you know about this story?" Mm. He was like, "You're so young. How do you how do you even know this story exists?" He thought that I, his initial thought was he thought I was biting off of his project. He thought I just came across his project and was biting off of it, and I was just as shocked as he was. But then I was also like that's kind of dope that you, you see me, you, mm-hmm. you found me, you yeah. recognize me. Yeah. Right. And, um, ended up just being a respect thing. Once I started talking about the case and George Denny, he realized like, no, she actually knows what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and she didn't bite off my film. It was just really odd that we were both making the production. They were in the middle of filming and my show was getting ready to go up mm-hmm. all at the same time. Okay. So it was it was very interesting. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was just like, man, wow. I, even from the picture mm-hmm. that you posted on your social media, yeah. I was like, that's going to be a really, really dope project. Where where did that occurrence happen? Where in, did that in North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. And you know what? I would love to share with you, too. I got testimonials from everybody. Most people, after they watch the show, I, after we just stepped outside in the lobby, I said, just give me your honest opinion, whether you liked it or not. Tell me what you thought about it. I don't recall a single dry eye mm. 
which means I did my job. I made them feel. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm gonna share that with you. Okay. I'm gonna share that with you, and you're more than welcome to share it because it's it's bigger than just about sharing something from Ruby. Mm-hmm. It's about making sure that people know his story. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So when you what was do you remember how many drafts did you do when you? Oh my god. How many drafts did you do? Probably I've, I've I changed the script about seventeen times, and I know it's like an odd number, right? Mm-hmm. But it really was about seventeen times from finding new information okay. to to even after I talked with the producer, he shared from the film, he shared some information with me, and I was like, I gotta, I need to change this because you want to make sure that you get people's stories accurate. 